So thank you. Thank you to uh, the organizers, of course. It's been uh, uh, an incredibly nice workshop. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, so this is based on work in collaboration with uh, Ravi, uh, who is also around. And um, so the first part will actually be about something that uh, he was, uh, uh, he, he tried to uh, talk about yesterday, but uh, didn't get enough time to do it. So I will, uh, I will uh, uh, speak about it today. So these are uh, peaks uh, uh, of the energy over density as a model for dark matter halos. So we're trying to do analytical models of statistics of large scale structures using uh, uh, peak theory in this context. So what are uh, energy peaks? So first, what is the energy over density? So in general, when you do these uh, uh, BBKS uh, uh, style calculations, what you have in mind is that uh, the main quantity is the geometrical radius of your patch, which is the thing whose cube gives you the, the volume. And this is related to the mean matter over density, delta R, which is the average over the volume of the over density delta at, at the point. And they are related because, uh, they are dynamically related because delta is the quantity that uh, sets the uh, evolution for, for R. So the um, characteristic time of the evolution of, of, of the geometric radius is uh, one over delta to the three half. So the denser is the patch at the beginning in the initial conditions, the, the, the faster it will decouple from the Hubble flow, turn around and recollapse. Yeah. So because you, uh, because dark matter halos are by, by, by definition, if you want the, the regions that collapse the fastest. Yeah. So looking for halos of mass M of again mass in, in, in this context is the same as looking for peaks in the initial conditions uh, uh, of the uh, matter density field uh, smoothed on the scale of the, of the Lagrangian radius. Yeah. So this is what you typically do. Now you could also do another thing, which is uh, look at the, uh, another radius, not the geometric radius, but what is called the inertial, inertial radius. It is the radius that is related to the uh, trace of the inertia tensor. Now this radius also comes with some uh, uh, over density quantity uh, attached to it. It's not the mean matter over density, but it is the mean energy over density. So this is the quantity that governs the dynamics, so the evolution of Ri in the same way as uh, delta does for the geometrical radius. And what is this mean energy over density? It is, uh, again, there is some uh, uh, average over the volume of uh, R dot grad phi. So it's like the radial component of the acceleration relative to the center of mass, or the infall velocity if you want, because we are in the initial conditions, so the law which applies. Yeah, so uh, this object here has the dimensions of, of a potential, of the potential, so this is the potential perturbation, and therefore we call it uh, energy over density. But you can see that the two are related because if you take the second derivative of Ri, you will differentiate this object here twice. So there will be some R double dot appearing, R double dot equal to minus grad phi, and that's why you get, you get this uh, quantity here. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, pretty much like the, the, the trace of the potential energy tensor that, that uh, Chandrasekhar, Chandrasekhar defined in, well, I think it was 1969. Yeah. So as a character, as a, Dynamical quantity, it sets the characteristic time of devolution for Ri. So the Ri will uh, turn around and recollapse in a characteristic time, which is of this order. So you replace uh, delta with epsilon. Okay. So again, if you want to look for halos in, 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 in this way, by uh, looking for regions whose uh, inertial radius collapses the, the, the soonest, then you're led to look for peaks of this different over density field, of the energy over density field rather than the matter over density field. Now, why is this better? So what is, what, if at all, what is the advantage? So one uh, nice property is that I, th there is no real dyna dynamical meaning in the, in the gradient of the density field, at least not that I could think of. But there is a very nice dynamical interpretation of the gradient of the energy field. So the gradient of the energy field, the first sphere, is the dipole moment of the sphere. That means that 
looking for peaks of the energy field, selects a sphere with no dipole moment, which means that if you do a, a, a multiple expansion of the acceleration at the surface, at the boundary, then you have that there, there is no dipole moment. So the dipole term is killed, and so the, the infall is pretty much radial. So the, the, the acceleration of the particles at the boundary is really pointing to, towards the center. So you have really placed your sphere at the center of the, of the, um, of the convergence of the uh, local velocity field. This is one thing. There is also another uh, uh, fact that uh, in Fourier space, uh, so there is one difference. Yeah? So the, as most people know, in Fourier space, uh, the, the, the uh, matter of density field is a convolution of the Fourier modes of the density field with a filter, which is the Fourier transform of the top hat filter. That is 3J1 over KR, J1 being Bessel function, spherical Bessel function. The same is true for the energy. Uh, because energy, uh, so potential and, and, and density are related by a Poisson equation, so it's not surprising that again we have a convolution. But the filter is now 15J2 over KR squared. So there is one extra power of 1 over K, uh, which is important. So why is this important? Because when you do, um, when you try to compute the statistics of, of the peaks, then one quantity that you need is the variance of the Laplacian of, of delta. That's because you are computing peaks. For, for a peak, you need uh, to deal with the Hessian. The Hessian has to be uh, negative definite, so you, you need to compute the statistics of, of, this, uh, of, this, uh, of this constraint, and so you need this object. Unfortunately, this object diverges. As you get infinite, if you try to compute it, for a top hat smoothed field with the lambda CDM power spectrum. So the filter is not uh, uh, sufficiently, is, is not falling off fast enough in, in, in K. While the energy filter has this extra power of 1 over K, so it is more efficient at, at killing the small scale power, and therefore this quantity that you need to do the calculation remains finite. So you actually can do the calculation that you would like to do from first principles. So the whole calculation remains rooted in what the equations of motion would like you to do. Fine, it, fine, it. Yeah, it's fine. It. And otherwise, if in, typically, when doing the calculation for the matter density field, the people uh, have to uh, resort to using the, the Gaussian filter. Then everything is fine. It, but then the physical interpretation, the connection with the physical interpretation, is a bit blurred. So. Okay, so this is much for the theory. Now let's see how it works. Now here I have, I'm, I'm plotting the, the two over density fields in the vicinity of the centers of mass of 25 random protohalos and, and from the most massive to the least massive. These are in units, so this is the mass in units of 10 to the 13 solar masses. So this is like two times, two, two 10 to the uh, 15 solar masses. This is 7 times 10 to the 13. You can clearly see by visual expression, uh, 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 visual uh, inspection, thank you, <laughs> that the, the correspondence between the, the peak and the center of mass is much neater for the energy over density field. So this is a good proxy. The peaks of this field are a good proxy for protohalo centers, and these are not. Uh, actually, um, more, often, more often than not, there are actually many peaks of the matter of density field, and you don't know which one to, to pick. And that's precisely because that variance is, is infinite, so that means that you can have as many peaks as you want next to each other, even, even uh, below the smoothing scale. So that's, that's why this one is, uh, I, I claim it works better. Yeah, so this is, this plot here is again the same, but only in, in one direction, but with many more halos. I'm stacking, uh, the, 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 the profile of the field again in, uh, around the, the center of mass of many protohalos. Now, this looks like a mustache, but the, the orange mustache is like a well-groomed mustache that is nicely pointing downwards, so it really, uh, wants you to be called the peak. Yeah? While the, the blue mustache is more like the mustache of someone who had a very bad day and uh, <laughs> clearly doesn't know which peak he has to, 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 to choose. 
Yeah? So this plot here, the y is, uh, it tries to quantify the distance from the peak of the two fields. Yeah? So these are the cumulative distribution function of the probability of the distance of the closest peak. So the orange lines, again, are the, are the energy peaks, uh, and you have to compare this line with the blue line, which is the, uh, the same for the mass, for the, for the mass over density in the same mass bin. Uh, sorry, for the matter over density. And it, it is much more likely to be close to an energy peak, uh, that, the, that the protohalo center is close to an energy peak rather than to a matter over density peak. Um, okay, so now that we know how to find the protohalo centers, let's see how we do with the mass function. Um, so th this plot shows you the uh, values of the uh, over density in uh, uh, patches or in spheres of with the radius uh, in Lagrangian spheres centered on the protohalo center of mass in the initial conditions. So uh, particles were traced back, and then uh, there is this. I put a sphere around the center of mass and I measure the, the energy over density, and that's what you get. So there is a lot of scatter. The same thing also happens for, for the, for the uh, uh, matter over density field, uh, by the way. So there is this uh, mythical uh, concept of delta equal delta critical, but in, in fact, uh, real halos have a lot of scatter. So it's not just a, a line. So the two things are, are yep. Here, oh, good, good. this is the variance. The, the sigma is the variance of the energy. Like, I call it sigma zero two to distinguish from, the, so, yeah, but it's very similar. It's the variance. So here, large masses, uh, and here, small masses. Yeah? Um, so if I fit a line uh, with some slope and, and, and some scatter in, in this plot, and I use this, uh, stochastic threshold to compute the mass function, then that's what I get. And it's a very, very neat agreement, very nice agreement. Not necessarily so for the matter uh, uh, over density case. In that case, I can try to play the same game, but if I fit a, 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 a threshold to the scatter plot, then the agreement with the mass function is less nice. Um, and okay, so if I have a good model for, for this scatter, then you can, you can try to study the assembly bias of the model. Uh, we, can, uh, we, we can talk about this uh, more in detail if you're interested. But now I, I wanted to go to the, uh, this minimum energy principle, which is uh, a very simple thing. So minimum en energy is simply because the energy of the patch, the initial energy of, the, of a generic patch, is uh, proportional to minus uh, the energy over density. So if you are maximizing the energy over density because you are looking for peaks, then you are minimizing the energy. So that explains the name. Um, and again, this is the same as minimizing the time of collapse of your uh, um, patch. Yeah? So it's, what I'm going to say now is slightly more interesting. So once you have found a peak by Place, moving your sphere around, so we, we, a spherical peak. Then uh, this is like a local uh, maximum of epsilon or a local minimum of the energy. But you can still do better because you can, by deforming now the sphere, I can uh, increase epsilon even further by, you know, I try to include uh, the regions uh, that have where the integrand, uh, the value of the integrand is larger, and I try to, by, by, by stretching my, 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 my boundary, or I push the boundary in where the value of the integrand is, is lower, and that way I can increase the value of epsilon. So this gives me a region which is no longer spherical, but that whose uh, inertial radius collapses even faster than the one of the sphere. Yeah. Now, it turns out that the, so I can now solve for the deformation, you know, the, the one that maximizes the, the energy. And it turns out that the boundary of the region of maximal epsilon, which is non-spherical or minimal energy, it must be an isocontour of this quantity, which is pretty much the, the integrand of the, of the energy uh, uh, over density. Uh, minus its uh, average over the volume. So this thing, this whole thing, uh, averaged over the protohalo patch would give me zero. 
But now I'm looking for, and I'm, I'm not averaging, I'm looking for, for uh, isocontours uh, of this quantity. And I claim that uh, this irregular shape, that is an isocontour of this uh, sort of potential function, thanks, will be a good proxy for uh, protohalo shapes, not just centers of mass, but actually the actual, the actual protohalo region. Yeah, so clearly uh, this, sir, this, uh, yeah, look, just look at it. Uh, this term, second term is always uh, uh, isotropic. So the isocontours will not be spherical if delta phi, the so grand phi is an anisotropic. Yeah? So the equipotential surfaces will, for them not to be spheres, I need an isotropy in, in the, in the infall velocity. So I can actually do this analytically. I can, exp I can expand in this deformation. And if I start from, from a sphere, I, I, I deform it. At first order, the deformation will go like, look at the numerator here. It, this is the uh, radial component of the infall velocity, if you want, uh, acceleration, minus this quantity that is exactly its uh, average over the angles. So, so the, the, what would be there if everything was spherical? Yeah? So this is simply that, it means that uh, when, so in the regions where the infall is more than the spherically symmetric uh, value, uh, there I have to stretch the boundary outwards so that the is larger than zero. And otherwise, where there is less infall than, uh, than the spherical average, I have to push the boundary inside. Yeah? So that way I can construct my deformation. And this means that my protohalo patch will be aligned with the longest axis in the direction of the strongest compression. Yeah, so that's, this is the direction that is perpendicular to the filament, yeah, where, where things are going to be pushed in, which is exactly what one sees in simulation. And okay, I'm just gonna show some plots. Three minutes should be fine. So these are some isocontours of this uh, 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 potential, so which should uh, depict the several, the, the subsequent shells of accretion of my, of my uh, protohalo. And if I zoom in, I can actually see that uh, eventually they, they, they split. So that would be a merger. Yeah? So it would be very nice to, to try to, to compute to, to this, make the, make the connection with the theory of critical events that Christoph was mentioning yesterday. So it would be nice to try to compute the statistics of these uh, mergers in this way. Now, this is how it does in, in, in practice. So these are big guys, 10 to the 15 solar masses, and these are actual protohalos. So the blue particle, the blue dots are protohalo particles, and the, the particles of the simulation of the initial conditions that uh, belong to the protohalo, and the orange dot are the particles that belong to the equipotential surfaces, and you can see that the agreement is quite nice, even though uh, they, they're clearly non-spherical. Same for 10 to the 14 solar masses, still good. Same uh, for the 10 to the 13 solar, solar masses, still not bad. Uh, and okay, here we have some more uh, quantitative uh, uh, description. So here I'm plotting the cosine of the alignment between the inertia tensor of the two surfaces of the, of the two regions, protohalo and uh, equipotential region. And so one means a perfect agreement. And uh, so most of them are above uh, 0.95. This is the uh, percentage of particles of the actual protohalo that are captured by the equipotential surface. And so again, you are above or close to 80% on average at small masses, small meaning 10 to the 13. These are the ellipticities, so the, the ratio of the uh, lar smallest to largest uh, axis of the inertia tensor for the uh, equipotential surfaces in orange and for the uh, um, protohalos in blue. So it's, agreement is good, good even though the equipotential surfaces are somehow more elliptical. And okay, this is just the ratio of, of, of the ratio. Uh, you see that there is uh, some scatter but almost no trend in mass. And uh, last thing as uh, Quarantin was, uh, was uh, mentioning, yes? Uh, oh, uh, I'm, I'm just, I have three bins in mass. 
So it's just because I am randomly sampling three bins in mass, and so my sample, I have very few masses at very large, very few hairs at very large masses, and, uh, uh, and then I, I, I am sampling more the lower mass size of the bin. It's just that. Uh, and uh, there is a, there is another another cut somewhere here, even though even though you you can't see it, you cannot see it. So this is these are the torques. Now this is the torque is the expression of the torque. I have to contract uh, the now the energy over density tensor, which is the same. This is the thing whose trace is the energy over density. Uh, I'm taking the anti-symmetric part, and, and and so that's what I get. This is less stunning because as you can see, for instance, the this is the cosine of the alignment between the uh, uh, angle, the, the torque vectors, and uh, yeah, okay, many of them are one, but some get dangerously close to minus one. But okay, we know that uh, <laughs> angular momentums are different, are difficult. I think it's still encouraging that uh, most of them are right, um, and that's that's it. Uh, I, I conclude uh, here. So. Uh, so I've, I've shown you two things, uh, how to do energy peaks, uh, and uh, I've, I've argued that energy peaks are a better proxy for protohalo centers than uh, matter uh, uh, over density peaks. And the second thing, I have uh, abandoned uh, the, the comfort of the, of the sphere to uh, venture into the sea of, uh, of uh, no predefined shape, no, sh no predefined shape, and uh, you can do so by using the Equipotential surfaces, and that's a good way to uh, find uh, the actual shape of the protohalo, not just its center of mass. Yeah, future perspective. Thank you. Thank you, Marcello. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, Marcello, how is your uh, method of defining the boundaries of protohalo? Uh, Meshes with what Ravi, mesh, Ravi meshes that we were discussing? Uh, yeah, it's a, we were actually discussing yesterday. It's not the same, but clearly it's very similar. So he... Um, the results look impressive in both cases. In, in both cases, How yeah, yeah. So be, I, I guess it's simple, be, yeah, but, but it's not the same, because what he's doing is that he's using Zeldovich, like he's, uh, he is uh, finding uh, the points that would get to the right point through the Lovich approximation. Uh, and uh, it's not clear to me that this is the same as, as the energy, but clearly if you look at this expression, uh, I cannot go backwards. I mean, mine also involves the gradient so in, in, of, of the, so in, the, the initial velocity. So there is some information that is uh, a la Zeldovich also in that case. So that could, could be similar. But I think that there is no, um, no it's, it's not obviously the same. It's not exactly the same. But I, I should think more. Um, I, I realize that there's a physical motivation behind going from delta to epsilon. Mm -hmm. But when you go from delta to epsilon, you just replace J1 over KR with J2 over KR squared. So why can't I go to J3 over KR cubed? Uh, I mean, right. do, you, do you stop winning or do you keep? I, uh, okay, so there, there, there are some quantities in which this appears, uh, but uh, I, I, okay, I, I couldn't find uh, from, like, from physics, physical first principles, uh, quantities. But it's just phenomenology then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. quantity will be a kind of smoother and smoother. Yeah, okay. so, so I, be less and less structure. there is less so, and less power on small scales, uh, yes, but. So it would just be a nice additional argument to uh, show that if you go one step further, it's actually worse. Uh, and therefore, that what you're doing is is yeah, better yeah. and you can't do better then, even still or something, right? That's, yeah, that's so it would be interesting right. to look at, even, yeah, if, yeah. even if it's goofy from a physics perspective. Right. <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, I haven't tried to do that. Well, if you went from I, second derivative of Right. Okay. Thanks. This is really impressive. Thank you. Um, 
I have a question regarding to the way you identify the surface in the end um, and comparing with the simulation. And it seems I don't see any clear flaw why this is still lead to some level of leakage, like there's some patch, some particles still kind of escape your defined boundary. Can you comment on? So why the agreement where, what, is not? Uh, it's not why it's not perfect. Well, because um, I'm doing things in the initial conditions, and it's not obvious to me that a, a proto halo and the, the, the final halo. First of all, the proto halo depends on the halo finder. Uh, that's already one thing. Um, so if I change the halo finder, I, I would change the blue region, but uh, I wouldn't know how. Right, but I, 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 if I understand correctly, but, from the beginning, when your definition of the energy yeah. kind of already naturally um, capture everything that fall in, right? It, it, so. it should, uh, it should, and that, that's why it does does well. But uh, so for instance, the energy is not conserved in uh, uh, in proto halo patches because they are not isolated. So one thing I, I would I, I, I am thinking to do to try to try to improve the agreement is to take into account the uh, non-conservation of the energy. So you can try to see what if I try to minimize uh, the final energy or the energy uh, at turnaround, for instance, because that's when sort of the evolution when the, the, the energy then starts being conserved. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing some calculation along those lines, and I, I don't have a result yet. Or try to change the halo finder, because most halo finders are, are density-based. So it would be interesting to use an energy-based halo finder. Maybe it is also useful for, for, I mean, if you want to connect with observational data. I don't know if you want to look in X-rays from, from clusters, maybe. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's also a whole whole uh, um, avenue to explore. Um, I feel I should defend peak theory. Oh, of um, course, <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> and and I, I made a uh, a point in the more recent papers we've done on this to do what I think is a complete misunderstanding of what peak theory is. It's mass peaks, not density peaks, and that's really fundamental. And one of the outcomes in the long list of things we get out of the peak patch peaks that mm -hmm. come out, mass peaks, let me emphasize that, is the binding energy, which is what you're getting at here. Yeah. And the binding energy for peaks is the mean value in the center, uh, uh, the mean value over the region of phi, that's a volume average, mm -hmm. minus the surface value. Mm -hmm. And so it's a delta phi, which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And they're very tightly correlated. So we had the option, and we tried it, of uh, doing um, epsilons, uh, what you call, did you call them epsilons? Epsilon B yeah. is what we called them, yes. the binding energy. Yes. And it fits enormously well relative to the data. And, uh, and so, uh, but a key point is exclusion mm -hmm. and making sure that it's a mass peak and not a density peak. Um, so, but apart from that, so I'm not quite sure why this becomes the right thing to do because you didn't describe how you determine the filter, which you have to do a dynamical collapse in order to get exactly the right size, the best you can. And so I think you said that's a to be done here, which um, is to do the dynamics to and relate it to what you called virialization. You you mean you mean to um, you have to do a flow the, the, the threshold rather yeah than, you have to do a flow yeah 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 uh, precisely yes yes which yes. is collapsing and you have to decide yeah, yeah. you have collapsed. Yes. So how would you do that in this framework? So, yeah, a very, very good question. So, um, I, one thing I'm trying to do, uh, so I, I, so of course, if you want to do this, okay, so it, the same problem is there also in, in, in standard peak theory because 
there also you need a threshold delta equal delta c is not yeah, yeah. true so reality once, so once again you're so, using which we i thought we had annihilated this which is the excursion set of mm -hmm. approach which doesn't make very much sense mm -hmm. we said it didn't make much sense in the original excursion set mm -hmm. thing and that peak patches was the right way to go mm -hmm. and i still believe that and of course i'm going to proselytize on this yeah. on thursday yeah. but uh <laughs> I thought I should give you advance notice that yeah. it's a complicated game. It is. Because you have to try and get a relationship to our famous R200 or delta. Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. 200. Yeah. yeah. It, and, you know, that's, you, you can fool around with yeah. that because the definition of halos is kind of stupid anyway. Yeah. But there is a lot that has to be done. So the other point yeah. I will. So if, make, if, if I may comment on, on that, so what I'm trying to do to address this problem is to try to, um, uh, yeah, precisely pr predict when uh, uh, the shell that is following spherical collapse, just in spherical symmetry, undergoes uh, uh, the first shell crossing. So when it, it it meets the shells that are gone through the center and are bouncing outwards, and uh, so that happens at some a uh, fraction of the turnaround radius, and uh, uh, if you have some, if, and typically the virial theorem, the one from, or the way it is used, the one that leads to delta equal delta c, says that this fraction should be half of the turnaround radius. It is actually not always the case. So uh, if well, you, you have... You have to have all three axes collapsing, which, uh, which is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's true, but because I am following a scalar quantity, so I'm following the sum of this, so the, the, my inertial radius is the sum of the, uh, you know, the three axes, uh, then I, I, I don't have that problem. I, well, I, if, I think it's, it's not a problem, it's actually uh, the correct approach that there are different collapse times so the three there are, there are uh, so it, it it i think it depends in 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 what in the way you see it now i guess that if you start from a sphere as i, I think was the case in in, in bond and myers correct me if i'm wrong yep. then you have to decide then the sphere the shear deforms the sphere and then you have the the, the problem of choosing or deciding which is the axis that col or following the axis that collapses for first. Uh, my approach is kind of the opposite. Is like uh, if you want finding the non-spherical configuration that uh, the dynamics uh, under the effect of the shear is going to pack into a, into a point or into a sphere. Uh, and that's why the protohalos are non-spherical in the initial conditions. They are elongated in the direction of maxim, maximum compression because the shear is going to pack them into a, into a sphere. And then, uh, in, in some sense, I, I, I bypass this problem of having to choose which eigenvalue collapses first. If you want, it's like finding the ellipsoidal patch that has the exact electricity so that the three eigenvalues do realize at the same time. No, Yeah. It, it, it is a, a non-spherical equipotential surface, but because it is a, a Sure, yeah. Shall, but, we, but, shall we, shall we yes, get we can, these yes. two? Because the reception <laughs> we'll not wait starts now. already now. <laughs> I fully I, agree that this is a very interesting question. topic. <laughs> um, okay, so let's thank everyone uh, of today, actually, once again. for all the interesting talks and I believe there is a reception out in the court uh, which has started two or three minutes ago.